Talk about your favorite episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> favorite episode of Dragon Ball Z. I mean, they're so... They all bleed into one another, like... I mean, you, you kind of distinguish Dragon Ball Z by its arcs, its sagas, not by on an episode-to-episode -episode basis, because there's so many storylines that are dragged out across a series of episodes. John, any more sex woman stories, or save it for the next stream? I'll think of something. I can't really think of anything right now. But uh, if I think of something, I'll let you guys know. Next stream, maybe? Then America, make America great again. Favorite moment of DBZ? Uh... I think it was when Namek finally explodes and Goku and Frieza are fighting on Na Namek. Frieza's in his final form and Goku's it's like Super Saiyan, Super Super Saiyan or whatever. Oh, it's just Super Saiyan, never mind. He doesn't go Super Saiyan 3 until later, but... But yeah, like, because I just remember watching that series as a kid every day after school and like being so stoked on that arc and like waiting for it to fucking come to its conclusion. And it finally did, and it was, like, such a huge payoff. Dragon Ball Z is fucking overrated. Yeah, I think it is. I think that's kind of true. I still love it, though. Cell absorb- Yeah, cell absorbing people. That was actually- I found that quite disturbing the first time I saw that. In a good way. I was like, oh, that's cool. It's like, this, the show keeps finding ways to be darker. That's awesome. The Garlic Jr. storyline, that was- that was awesome, too. That- purple gas that infects everybody and turns them insane or whatever. Thoughts on the Alien Covenant trailer? Uh, looks like a nuts, standard nuts and bolts kind of horror slasher monster movie. Um, and I'm totally on board with that. Looks cool. I mean, I'll, I'll leave the slow-paced sci-fi to uh, the new Blade Runner. But yeah, I'm, I'm down for a, a Ridley Scott Alien movie where it's just like an alien on a ship killing people? It doesn't sound too deep or interesting, but whatever, I'm down. If they do it well. You can do pretty much anything as long as it's well executed. How do you feel about people doing reaction videos to Arby and the Chief? Oh, yeah. I used to think that trend was so weird. Reaction videos. Like, who the fuck would want to watch somebody watching something else? That's so stupid. But I, I, I got around to watching a few of them myself. And it can be kind of amusing, like, watching someone watching something else and, like, really being scared or really, like, laughing. Like, it can make you feel good, you know, watching stuff like that. Cause, and because you connect with how they're feeling. And, you know, it's, it's the same kind of thing applies to those, uh, you know, like, E3 reveal trailers where, like, instead of just this, the trailer on its own you would look at the reveal trailer and it's like that's when it was unveiled to the public and you hear the crowd cheering at certain parts of like the trailer like the last of us 2 trailer where you can hear like the the silence of the audience waiting as they're bracing their, themselves for a reveal and then you see the uh the the logo for the uh the fireflies and then it cuts to black and then it's just like naughty dog and then everybody fucking loses their shit like that's kind of awesome like watching stuff like that because you kind of, you feel like you're a part of that crowd, you know? You're like, oh, they're getting excited at all the right parts. Like, that's awesome. Sometimes that's not the case, but sometimes you're just like, God, shut up. It's not that cool. Uh, as far as reaction videos to Arby and the Chief, I really don't give a shit, to be honest. I mean, I feel it's kind of cool, if, if anything, I guess. But I'm not really that interested in watching. I mean, I am interested, but there is something, like, cringy about me... The idea of me watching someone watching my content. I don't know why. It's kind of stupid for me to like, kind of reel at the thought of that. But it just makes me kind of uncomfortable for some reason. I don't know fucking why. But I wouldn't seek out a reaction video to my content is my point. How often does John stream? Uh, I haven't been doing it very often, but I would like to do it more often. I mean, I've been trying to do this fucking podcast, but the up until now, the podcast has always been recorded in such a way that it's just me and the microphone and there's not a live audience. So it takes, I'm very self-conscious about what I'm saying and I have a lot of false starts and there's a, a huge temptation to like abandon thoughts and like restart what I'm saying and like when I shouldn't and I should just keep going with the flow. But that's, that's what this helps me do, being live on a stream 
with like people who I know are watching, that encourages me to like speak up and be and just you know make shit up and just keep things moving forward and keep saying shit. So I think I think I want to do this more often and I want to record the podcast this way. So when I'm when I release the next podcast episode, I'll just have it like this, but with the dead air cut out. You know what I mean? Hopefully that works out. And I, I can convert it to like an MP3 pile and f file, and still put it on SoundCloud and iTunes and shit. Dude, speaking is hard. Yeah, dude. I mean, I I'm all right doing this, but like when it's just you alone in a fucking room with your thoughts and your crazy mind, and you, it's up to you to like, and you don't have an audience, and you're just like there in front of the microphone, and there's this temptation to keep restarting what you're saying if you don't get if you flub a word. There's such temptation to self-edit too much because, you know, there's nobody watching, so you can fuck around with it all you want before it gets seen by the public. And it just, it freezes my mind up a lot. Like, I'd, I've done it, I'd done it before in the past, but I just lately, I haven't been able to psych myself into it. So, like, this is the only way I feel like I can do it lately. Just all this, stressed out with the fucking film festival, Crazy Eights thing, getting that script done, and then all this, mo getting fucking moved from one house to another, and then this fucking bullshit this morning about the house being sold from under our feet to new owners who, you know, we're still going to be here for the length of our year lease that we signed, but um, but after that, if, if the house falls under new owners, they might decide to just move into the place themselves. Again, like exactly what fucking happened the last time. I need a fucking gun. Why am I just picking up dinner trays and bullshit? I need some something that can do some fucking damage for Christ's sake. Hey, John, have you met any fans before? Yeah, I was talking about that earlier. Just the other day, I was grocery shopping last night to make spaghetti, some ingredients. And I found a guy working the aisles. He's like... <laughs> I was grabbing some like garlic powder or something or grated Parmesan cheese and uh, he walked by me, he did a double take. I had my headphones in, I didn't hear him at first, but uh, I could see him trying to talk to me. So I took off my headphones, I'm like, what's what's up? And he's like, are you John Graham? I'm like, yeah, that's me. And he's like, dude, I watched your streams and Arby and the Chief and shit. You're, and uh, he said it was really cool and I said, oh, thanks, thanks a lot, man. And then uh, he ran into me later in one of the other aisles, and he's just like, hey, sorry to bother you, but do you mind if I uh, take a picture with you? I was like, no, go ahead, dude, that's cool. And so I, I, that's that photo on Twitter of me going in uh, the, the aisle. The mall is your weapon. Fuck you. Just give me a gun or something. The mall is your weapon. Are you a Capcom rep? Were you paid to say that by Capcom? John, do you ever use Reddit? If so, what do you look up? Uh, I'm not really on Reddit most of the time. If I'm on an if I'm on a board, I'm usually on 4chan. I'm not on Reddit. Sometimes I go on Reddit. Depends on what the subject matter is I'm researching cuz sometimes Reddit can be a valuable resource, but I'm not typically lurking Reddit. I don't make a habit of it. Cuz I don't I don't like the upvote system that any post that's disagreed with can just be downvoted into oblivion and nobody fucking sees it. And then all the mass, massively popular shit makes it to the top and then it just becomes kind of an echo chamber of, you know, the hive mind's thoughts of what's funny and what's relevant. The red pill on Reddit. Yeah, I've read all that red pill shit years ago. John, where is your bottle of wine? Ah, uh, it's downstairs. Downstairs. We're having a party a few days ago, actually, a New Year's party. I was smart this time. A fucking Halloween party. I fucking ruined that. I got sick halfway through the night because I drank too much fucking wine. But this time I paced myself, had a lot of water, and I made it through the whole night. Wasn't hung over the next morning. Had a good time throughout. I was perfectly buzzed. Beautiful. What board do you lurk, John? Um, I'm usually on TV. Most of the time I'm on TV. That's like my go-to board. Sometimes I go to V or B or GIF. GIF probably second most, just because I'm always looking for you laugh, you lose threads. But annoyingly, almost every time, like, just half of those threads are just full of WebMs of, like, you know, Islamophobe humor. Where it's just, like, the punchline to every joke is, Allah Akbar, and then something explodes. I'm just like, okay, it's funny the first 5,000 times, but it's getting a little bit old. Or, like, some anti-Semitic shit. All the hot buttons. Thoughts on Rouge One? <laughs> I talked about this before. Rouge, Rogue One was... I liked it, man. I thought it was cool. It felt like... I f 
really felt like the Star Wars franchise needed to break out of that trilogy framework, you know, where the you, the Force Awakens kind of followed a new hope beat for beat. Like, I'm glad a, mo a Star Wars movie came out that could kind of do its own thing narratively. And yeah, it's kind of familiar with, you know, to... Because Halo Reach pretty much did that thing already. Like, this the suicide mission story that benefits the greater story. Um, but it did it well, man. And it wasn't so fucking heavy-handed with the, with the pro-female shit as the For Force Awakens was. In, in Rogue One, it was appropriately played, I think. Felicity Jones? She did pretty good. What game are you playing? Dead Rising 2. I wish I could find a fucking gun. Did you see Black Sabbath live, John? Uh, no, can't say I did. Force Awakens had charismatic characters. That's true, but I think it could be argued that that's true to a degree of annoyance. Like, I kind of found it annoying how charming and almost caricature-like all the characters were. Most of them were. It was, a it was a little larger than life compared to Rogue One, which felt like pretty much just a war movie, but in the Star Wars franchise. It was just stormtroopers everywhere shooting lasers. You should have played on the record edition of Dead Rising 2. Uh, oh, is that the, like, the DLC? What does that have? Oh, is that where you can play as Frank? Frank West? Hey, John, what do you, what movie are you looking forward to this year? Uh, I don't know. Is Blade Runner coming out this year? That looks pretty dope. I've still been meaning to see Arrival, but I just don't want to spend money on the theater. I'm trying to fucking save money. But uh, when Arrival comes out on streaming or whatever, I'll definitely want to check that out. That's really the only movie I've wanted to see recently that I'm desperate to see. Everything else I can just kind of wait for. Doctor Strange, I haven't seen that, but I heard it was cool. Now, what do I have to do to trigger this event finally? Suck somebody's dick? You're looking forward to Spider-Man Homecoming? Yeah, dude. I think Tom Holland is a great choice. I'm glad Marvel finally... I mean, how fucking infuriating must it be, seriously? If you're like Stan Lee or somebody at the heart of Marvel who originally came up with these characters, and then all of a sudden you lose the rights to make a movie about that character because over the course of, you know, like a dozen years, character rights have been lost through numerous deals, and, you know, it's like... Oh, you, you, can, you can't make a Spider-Man movie even though you made the character and came up with the, all the comics and shit like that. No, Sony owns Spider-Man now, so we're going to make your Spider-Man movies for you. Like, y legally, they might be in the right, but that y as you, as like uh, one of the founders of Marvel who created these characters, you would be like, fuck you. F seriously, go f fucking suck a fuck. I can't make a movie about a character that I fucking created. Go to hell. I'd, I'd fucking make it anyway and, like, just like, wait to get sued. You know what I mean? But I'm glad fucking Marvel finally got it back. I didn't think Sony was doing that terrible with the franchise either. Like, I know people f probably fucking hate me for saying that. They're gonna say Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 were pieces of shit. But I really don't think so. I think there's merit to those movies. I think Andrew Garfield made a decent Spider-Man. I liked Emma Stone. I liked the fact that those two were in a real relationship at the time and that came through the screen for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, that that relationship felt genuine. Um, it got kind of goofy with the dubstep and the electro shit, but I still thought it was a sol solid movie. Um, it was a beautiful looking movie. The way they wedged Paul Giamatti as Rhino in the end was fucking stupid. I didn't think it was that awful. I didn't think it was quite the cancer that it was being made out to be, like Batman versus Superman. I came out of the theater for that, and I was just like, that wasn't so fucking bad. What was everybody complaining about that this was, like, so fucking diabolical? Who could have made this? Zack Snyder! How could you have unleashed this on humanity? Who gives a shit? It's a little hokey, but it wasn't a, that terrible of a movie. I wasn't bored. And really, as long as you don't bore me... I'm pretty much on board with whatever whatever you do. Because boring somebody in the theater is the worst thing you can do. That's definitely what you don't want. Tobey Maguire Spider-Man was the best. What do you mean? You mean Tobey? Dude, Andrew Garfield was Spider-Man between Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire. I'm aware of the Tobey Maguire movies. The Spider-Man 1 is really good. Spider-Man 2 is one of the greatest superhero movies I think has ever been made. And Spider-Man 3, of course, is kind of a joke. 
With Topher Grace as Venom. Yikes. What the fuck were they thinking? Seriously. I like Topher Grace, but, like, you gotta cast people appropriately. An Eddie Brock, that guy does not make, in my opinion. You know why Spider-Man 2 was so good? Is because it knew what it was. And that was a movie about Peter Parker. It wasn't about Spider-Man. It was about Peter Parker having this fantastic alter ego that he really can't make time for without being exhausted and failing at his studies and failing in his relationships. Like, you, you really got a sense that living as a superhero was taking a toll on that character. And there was this real sense of crisis. Like, I have these abilities, but, like, do I not deserve my own life? Like, you really felt that conflict. And by the time the action, the superhero action-y shit started, the tension was like racked up so fucking high because you already felt so bad for Peter just with the, the small stuff. Like getting Aunt May getting mad at him and not being able to pay the bills and him revealing that it was him that got Uncle Ben killed because he, you know, he wanted that wrestling money or whatever. So it, it almost feels like two movies in one, like a character drama about Peter Parker, and then all of a sudden there's like a fight with Dr. Octopus, and it seems like unbelievable. It's like, oh shit, you know, the, tent, the stakes are super fucking high now. And that, that was, the reason that is, that movie was so good is because it had a good fucking screenplay. And that's really what it comes down to every time. That, Spider-Man 2 is a tight script. I don't mean t tight just as an awesome, but airtight. Breaking Bad is the worst show ever. <laughs> I got into a discussion recently with a friend about Breaking Bad who didn't like the fifth season, and I was defending it. His argument was that Walter's evil had kind of climaxed at the end of season four, because, like, he poisoned a kid, or it was suggested anyway, and it should have just ended there. But I was saying, well, we don't really know Walt... Tr we know that Walt tried to poison the kid, but we don't know Walt tried to kill the kid. That's different. Like, for all we know, Walter White just administered the right amount of poison to, to at least get him in the hospital and get people worried, but not actually kill him. And I argued for Season 5 of Breaking Bad that it's... <laughs> season 5A and Season 5B are respectively the rise and fall of Walter White. And I think it's very artistically plotted. Like, it's very elegant design, the way that the plot moves, and the way, you know, every episode has, like, a cliffhanger kind of ending. Are you a Pats fan? I don't know what that is. Uh. John, will you upload this? Because I need to sleep, but I want to hear the rest of the stream. Yeah, I'll upload it. And I'll, I'll cut it up into an episode of the podcast, too. John, do you have the Mega Man skin for this game? No, I don't. I actually didn't even know there was a Mega Man skin. I mean, I knew there was one in the first game, but not, I didn't know there was one in the second game. He knew the kid wasn't going to die, he just needed to get Jesse to make his move. Yeah, exactly. And I argued that, yeah, of course they would make a Season 5, because as soon as Gus Fring is killed, that leaves this enormous power vacuum. And that's what the story has really been leading to all along, is how far can this character go in the drug trade? And now, Season 5 is about Walter White stepping into that power vacuum and filling that spot that Gus Fring left behind. And earning so much money that so f it gets to a point that it's so fucking incalculable that, that, that uh, his wife doesn't even know how much it is anymore. It's just, it's just this pile of money. So it's like, what are you doing this for? And it makes him question his motivations. Like, is it really for money or is it just for pride? And that's really what it came down to. I think Breaking Bad is a story about a man's pride and how it can take you down the darkest of paths. You know what I mean? But those are just my two cents. <sighs> if you like, if you like what I have to say about popular shows, is Breaking Bad. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Got a lot more videos for you there to enjoy. Have you seen Rick and Morty? No. I've seen a few episodes. It's brilliant. I just haven't watched the whole thing yet, and I've been meaning to. Did you think the way Gus Fring died was kind of dumb? Not the plot to kill him, but the way he walked out and died? No. I, I thought that was cool. I thought that was very showman-like of Vince Gilligan and his team to do. It feels like something they would do. Because every, every season they try and build to something insane, and I think there is a showmanship in that that I really respect. Not over the top in a bad way, but uh, grounded in reality, but cool in like a comic book sort of way. 
where it's like, oh, that might happen, maybe. But it's like the show has been played so straight, the season has been played so straight for so long that when a moment like that comes along, you kind of accept it as being, oh, shit, that's what happened to that guy. And it was a cool pun because the, the title of that episode is called Face Off and surprise, he gets his face blown off. You got a woman in your life yet, John? Nope. Still working on my shit by myself, single, like a fucking loser. Hooray for me. When does the sequel come out for Mega Man Goes to Willamette? You know what? I've been seriously considering doing another one of those. I was gonna buy Dead Rising 1 on Steam, but it wasn't on sale. Only Dead Rising 2 is on Steam. I was like, fuck, Dead Rising 1's still $20? Why don't they make that? Why don't they make a package deal? Why can I, can I get the first one on sale? Fuck you. But I hope, I hope that the first game goes on sale. And if it does, then I can, like, capture that footage and just, like... I mean, I could capture the footage anyway. I still have the old Xbox version, but... But yeah, I have been considering doing another one of those. Because it's, like, a fan favorite. You got a man in your life, John. Oh, yeah, I got plenty of men in my life. Every time I do a stream and I tell people how fucking shitty my love life is, I've always got a platoon of guys ready to say, Hey, John, you can suck my dick if you want, or I'll suck your dick if you want. Don't worry, we're all here as guys for you. You can fuck my ass if you want, John. Can I fuck yours? It's like, I'm so tempted, guys, but I'm gonna have to pass. I wish I could be like a woman and just flick that fucking switch and decide that I'm into the same sex all of a sudden, but I can't because I'm a gross, disgusting, vile fucking male white cis male scum and I'm straight and I'm stuck with that there's no fucking switch that I can flick I can't just get tired of the opposite sex and be like oh whatever I'll just I'll just stick with men now I'll just wean myself on a cock I don't have that fucking benefit unlike women unfortunately people talk about men being so privileged but it's not all fucking peaches and cream we have our own fucking shit to deal with it's not all puppies and fucking sunshine when you're a man. We are privileged, but it's not like the world is s our oyster served on a satin fucking pillow. I'll buy it for your for you, John. What's your steam? Oh shit. My st if you want to if you guys want to gift me shit, I can play it on the stream. Like I mean if you guys are willing to do that. I'm not saying you guys should buy me games and shit, but if somebody wants to, hey, my email is my username is I think it's still digital fear on Steam. <laughs> all lowercase. Digit no spaces. Digital fear. All lowercase and then the E's are threes. Fucking stupid. You know how it's spelled. And my email is JCJ Graham like at hotmail.com. I usually say my Gmail one, but I think it's the Hotmail one that I have associated with my Steam account. John, what did you think of the finale for season two for Ash vs. Evil Dead? You know what? I actually haven't seen it yet. I've been watching season two. I'm like halfway through it. And I, I love that show, man. I think it's great. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm excited for the finale. I'll, I'll let you guys know once I see it. But I'm stoked. I was watching season seven of Walking Dead for a while there. But I stopped because I just lost interest, kind of. I heard the reviews were declining. Which is a real shame. Because they were building up that whole Negan thing for so long. John, I know a girl. I'll hook you up with strippers and coke, man. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. John, why didn't don't you do stand-up comedy? I did do stand-up comedy once. I did five minutes in the basement room of a, of a pizza joint to an audience of about maybe ten people. And I, 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 I prepared a little five-minute set. And some of those ten people were people that came with me. So that tells you just how big this fucking crowd was. Or how not big it was, rather. I always legally stream TV shows, <laughs> air quotes around legally, yeah. That is a real problem, man. I'm, I'm, it's It scares me to think what's going to happen with the whole media landscape. It's really hard to say. Because, like, you've got all these th streaming services like Netflix being made available, but it's, like, getting bogged down by, like, you know, uh, um, broadcast licenses. Like, oh, we'll, we'll buy this show on Netflix and we'll air it on Netflix for a window of time, but then we'll pull it off again. And then we'll put it back on when demand rises again. I'm just like, fuck you. If you put something on Netflix, don't fucking take it off. Just keep it on there. Why are you taking it off? Jesus Christ. I'm so, f like... 
I mean, if you, if you watch something, you want to be able to have it there to, like, watch again. Like, I was so annoyed. Like, I wanted to watch The Shield again. That show on FX with Michael Chiklis. I fucking love that show. It was all on Netflix, and then they all they took it all off. Like, why would they... Ugh! It makes me so fucking mad. And then it just erased... Just doing that shit raises the appeal in all these illegal fucking streaming websites that just have all this shit constantly. And it's like there's this feeling of ambivalence. It's like you want to give money to people who deserve it and keep the media, keep that industry supported. But like, with all these streaming services, we've seen the potential already with, with what streaming online media can be. That there really is nothing fundamentally beyond earning money and contracts and bullshit technologically there's nothing limiting people from having somebody from having a service that's world cinema that has everything and it never goes away that is possible you can get that shit with a fucking android tv box you can load it up with all this fucking software this homebrew shit that connects you with all these streaming websites and you can use an android box to play f literally fucking anything from this little box from and it, it just like hooks you up to all these streaming services online and it makes you so you don't have to deal with any of the bullshit ads and pop-ups that you would if you were dealing with it uh, via a browser. You can just go on this box and play fucking anything and there's no subscription fee. And I've, I've seen this in action and I'm just like, it's wonderful. It's like this is what Netflix should be. And you know, if, if Netflix I, w I wish Netflix was like that. I would happily pay a subscription fee for that. But Netflix is like... You know, Netflix became big, and as soon as a company that gets big, then every other big fucking company out there, all the conglomerates, they want a little slice of the action, don't they? So they come in and they start poking their fat fucking fingers in the pie and fucking shit up with all these little temporary contracts and stuff. Oh, well, we'll... Well, we'll 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 put this show on Netflix right now, but then we're gonna take it off, and then we're it's all strategic. We're gonna take it off at this time, and then you know uh, this movie's coming out, which is kind of relevant, and that's gonna build the buzz about the franchise again. And then we'll release the show again when uh, when uh, the band is at its peak, and then we'll get a flood of viewership in and more uh, subscriptions. It's like fuck you, seriously, you fucking assholes. You're getting in the way of this like media utopia. Where everybody can get access to anything they want, any kind of content from any kind of corner of the world instantaneously. And we're willing to pay for it. Just make it happen. But you're not because you get on you, this, this fucking greed shit comes in the way. And it pisses me off so fucking much. The technology is there. I mean, it's just ourselves as a species getting in the way. Like people who just want to be greedy and monopolize on it as much as fucking possible. They start putting all these little rules and restrictions on the content. And I don't understand why libraries for Netflix are still different in the UK and Canada and US or whatever the fuck. Why can't it just be the same everywhere? Why do we have to be cut off from shit just because we live somewhere? It's all digital. Who gives a fuck? It's all on a server somewhere. We can all access it. Stop giving us this bullshit. Like, oh, we don't have the movie here to play. Sorry, I, oh, I was too... Oh, or there's a DVD in one of my pockets here too, so I can stream... Oh, I guess not. Oh, I guess you can't watch it. Oh. Go suck a dick. Amazon Prime is pretty good, though. Yeah, I don't... I haven't... I tried Crave. That was okay. But even then, it's like you gotta pick and choose. It's like... It's bad as fucking cable packages now. You know what I mean? You can't just have one subscription service that has everything no you got to subscribe to everybody's little bullshit channel that ever and everybody every channel has their own we have this show this show and this show but not that show if you want that show you got to go to well maybe i want that show and this show so i gotta get two fucking subscriptions great fuck you no wonder everybody's fucking streaming everything because it's easier and it's possible it's out there you just got to go to the fucking website and if you're savvy enough to be able to pick out ads and all that other bullshit that so many people fucking fall for. Like, you, you fuck around like me with computers long enough and you learn how to sniff the shit out and avoid all that stuff. Like, I've never really had to do a virus scan because I just don't get viruses because I know what it takes to get a virus on the system and I know how to avoid it.
But anyway, it's, it's possible for people to just, like, oh, this movie's not on Netflix. I don't want to go out to, because there's not a blockbuster anymore I can not I can go out to. Fuck it, I'm just going to stream it or torrent it. Or a lot of people can't torrent now because the ISPs are monitor, monitoring the traffic. And as soon as you torrent something, even accidentally, you get a fucking email forwarded to you from Viacom saying, Hey, uh, you can't download this, this is ours. So then you gotta stop doing that shit. But then people just stream instead. They'll always find another fucking way around it. Whatever fucking stupid little bullshit rules that you try to implement, the inter internet and its anonymity and the, the crowd of people out there, somebody somewhere in some crevice of the world is gonna have the technology and the know-how to get past whatever fucking little bullshit security you're gonna come up with. And, you know, I just feel like... This kind of worldwide streaming for everybody is inevitable, you know, all content. And it's just a matter of waiting for the, the companies to just get on board and not try to fuck things up with their little temporary viewing contracts and all that shit. But uh, whatever, what the fuck do I know? What's even more bullshit about it is we are willing to use their service to view said media. Can we still watch it without using their medium? Yeah, but it becomes tedious and redundant. I mean, I... Everybody has the ability to load up a fucking streaming site and watch whatever they want. So, and that's not, that technology's not going anywhere. You take down a server that offers that service, three more are going to pop up somewhere. Stop trying to fucking fight it and get with the program. So, it's up to companies like Netflix. Are you going to fucking get on board? Or are you going to be a fucking cunt and come up with some bullshit little technology thing that detects people that are streaming and stop them from streaming or whatever? and just make things more fucking annoying for people? Or do you maybe want to get on board and stop with these region locks and like region restricted content and this other fucking bullshit horse shit that makes no sense? It doesn't have to be this way. There's only a region lock because you put a fucking region lock there because of something that's related to greed. John, we get it, you vape. <laughs> And it's only going to get worse for companies like Netflix. Like, yeah, technology is evolu evolving on their end, but for the common man, who f f you people out there who figure this, this shit out to manipulate technology to get it to work, I mean, they're just going to have more and more technology at their disposal and more and more points of failure to exploit in technology to make it so there's always going to be st st uh, uh, content out there to stream illegally. So I, th I think people should be trying to get on board with that. Because, I mean, that is what we're, we want to strive for, like, as a species, is to have all our media pooled in one place and stop discriminating and saying, Oh, you live here, so you can't watch this content. Fuck you, seriously. Little fucking nerd putting walls on everything. Dead Rising 4 is pretty good. Really? Somebody on here told me it was a piece of shit. I don't want to believe them. I want to believe that it's the best game ever in the... I think it's coming out on Steam in a few months, isn't it? Dead Rising 4 is awful and the real ending is deals. Oh yeah, I heard about that. They put overtime mode in downloadable content. That's fucking stupid. Because we... we Overtime mode in the first game was the end, the real ending. So like if you, if you pull this shit that, oh, overtime mode is DLC now, you're telling the audience, fuck you, you have to pay for the real ending. Why Why is Capcom... Oh my god, what are they fucking smoking over there? But John, they need their shekels. <laughs> First game in ages I refunded. Really? Oh, jeez. The reviews I saw were decent. John, check your Steam for Dead Rising 1. Did you really send Dead Rising 1? Oh man, thank you. If you actually bought that, that's fucking awesome. Cap Cunt is always pulling this shit with DLC. Really? I didn't notice. I mean, maybe I guess I haven't bought it. Capcom game in a while. The last one I bought was Resident Evil 6, I think. Do you plan on doing a stream for the new South Park game when it comes out? Oh, hell yeah, dude. I would st I would stream Stick of Truth if I had it on Steam. I got it on PS3, but it's a pain in the ass getting that hooked up with the OBS thing, so you, you guys are able to see the footage. Like, it, if I want to stream a game, like, I want it to be on computer, because I think that's the only way I can get it to work. House of Cards, dude. Yeah, I watched I watched all four seasons of that. Are they making a fifth season? I don't know. But I love that show, man. Kevin Spacey's the shit in that role. Capcom has been a fucking asshole in the last few years. Oh, that's too bad. I'll buy you Stick of Truth. Well, <laughs> you guys are very kind. You don't have to buy me games. But hey, I'm, if you want to, I'm not going to stop you.
but thank you. If I'll, I'll check my Steam and see. I don't know if that guy was just trolling me. If he really did buy me Dead Rising one, if that if he did, that's great. John, check out Black Mirror on Netflix if you haven't. It's great. Yeah, I've watched Black Mirror. It's fucking awesome. But uh, I watched season two and three. But I just noticed that they added all of season one to Netflix, and I ha I've yet to go through all that. So I got to do that. Do you like 4chan? Uh, I mean, 4chan is is a ridiculous farce. But that's why I like it. I guess, so I guess, yeah, I do like it. I like that it's uncensored. I like that it's, like... I like that there's one place that's in the hive mind that people are able to go to and feel like they can say whatever they want, even if it's horrendous. It feels like a safe haven, almost, for being for still being able to be cruel online. And cruelty isn't something I often... S I mean, I, d I don't support being cruel to people, but as long as you're not, like, hurting other people, I think being cruel in your writing has the potential to be very funny. And I value that in uh, over offense being offensive every time. I don't care... If you're saying something offensive, I don't really care as long as you're being funny about it. And I don't sense that what you're saying is coming from a real feeling of genuine hatred. You know what I mean? Have you checked out Ple Peaky Blinders on Netflix? No, I haven't. Is that one with, that's the one with uh, Cillian Murphy, right? John, do you enjoy Tarantino films? I love Quentin Tarantino, man. He's one of my top inspirations. I think the way I kind of do dialogue and the way I produce stuff that's a little bloated in length, <laughs> I think I kind of share that trait with Tarantino. And Tarantino just has this attitude of like, fuck it, I'm going to make what I want to make. And I think it's entertaining. So if you don't like it, don't see it. Fuck you if you think it's too long. And to a degree, I think I kind of adopt that same philosophy. So I just, I don't like putting a page count on my stories if I feel like I have more places to go with it, if I have more to say. Because there's just no reason to cut it down. I don't have to, this isn't television. I don't have to fill precisely seven minute gaps between air or between uh, commercials. I mean, it's the internet. I can make my videos as long as I fucking want. So, and I, I'm not, whenever I make something like that premiere episode it was over an hour long, definitely probably longer than it should have been. But at no point did I ever feel like I was really dragging my heels with that episode. I wasn't trying to pad things out. I was just like, I got more story that I want to write. So I'm going to make the episode this long and whatever. I mean, why would people complain? It's just more content, you know? And if people don't want to watch it all at once, they don't have to. I don't have a fucking gun to their head. No, you got to watch the whole thing. Just if you want to pause it, <laughs> go to the bathroom, get something to eat, go to bed, come back to it a few days later. I don't give a fuck. Go ahead. Do that. Does everything have to be precisely 22 minutes long to be bearable? Tarantino has made some of the best movies ever. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown. I mean, I'm, there's no point like naming the ones that I like of his because everything he's done is, I think, is great. The only thing that I found uh, the, a little lacking was the Hateful Eight, but even that I really enjoyed. But it just it felt a lot different because it was just all in the one location pretty much, and for its length. You know, the length combined with the fact that it's all pretty much in one setting is a little tedious. But the dialogue is always sharp enough that I'm just like, whatever, I don't care how long it is. Yo, John, sorry if you already addressed this, but are you going to be posting this as a regular podcast on iTunes and all that? Yeah, my intention is to cut out the dead air and then uh, make an episode or two out of that, out of this. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll make an episode and a bonus episode out of this. But if people are attentive enough to know when I'm streaming live, then they have the opportunity of watching the bonus episodes for free as they're recorded, recorded live, you know what I mean? And the, the podcast, the regular podcast episodes are, of course, public and anybody can see them. But uh, there's the bonus episodes, too, which uh, people get access to if people are paying me at least two bucks via patreon that's all i ask for for the bonus episodes it's like a dollar for screen or not screenplays a dollar for to get the video feed for the podcasts 
via Patreon. And then two bucks for like the bonus episodes in their entirety. And then uh, three bucks for screenplays. And every level includes everything below it. So like uh, a screenplay archive and then uh, new ep- new sc- screenplays for new episodes as they're released. Like I post the PDFs on Patreon for people to download and read for reference if they're curious about screenwriting or how I'd make the show and stuff. Um, John, honestly, the more content an episode, the better. Can't get enough of this series. Thanks, man. Let's move on to another one here. This one's from Tony. Hey, cuck. Hey bro, first time messaging you. Been watching your show since season six and have rewatched all your seasons except LA numerous times. You're nothing short of amazing. Anyways, quick questions. Thanks, dude. Why do you pronounce again and been so weird? Sometimes it's... There's a little bit of the Scottish accent that lingers in the way that I talk sometimes, but I I definitely lost my accent a long time ago. But the pronunciation of certain words I fuck up. Sometimes I say again, sometimes I say been instead of been. I don't know, sometimes. Who cares? Fuck. Who gives a shit? Any chance of selling an Arby in the Chief shirt? Well, we went over that. How do you survive a 20... How do you survive negative 20 degree weather and constant moose stampedes in the snow? Because there's blizzards everywhere here in Canada and and mooses. Meese. Herds of meese. Can't move around in Canada here with all the meese running around that's all for now hope hope all is well and you're not using too much patreon money on cocaine and hookers <laughs> best regards tony baloney <laughs> p.s instead of playing baby games like zelda you should play paper mario 64 and now that's a real man's game yeah i played that just the n64 one briefly i didn't beat it but you're right that was cool this one's from jacob Hey, John, just wanted to thank you for all the hard work you put in Arby and the Chief. I grew up with the series, and it left quite the impression on me, especially later seasons, and I think season eight is your best work so far. Keep it up. My question to you is, what's your favorite video game of all time, and why? P.S. I know you get asked this a lot, but have you considered buying an Xbox One? I think it would be pretty cool for you to host custom games for fans on Halo or something, plus it would give you something to do on streams when the EA fucks up a Dead Space port. Just an idea. Sincerely, Jacob. What is your favorite video game of all time and why? Jeez. I don't know. Something old and like pivotal in my own experience like Zelda, Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. Probably Ocarina of Time or maybe Sonic 3 and Knuckles. That was really what got me into gaming. Have you ever considered buying an Xbox One? Of course I've considered buying an Xbox One. I don't live under a fucking rock. I mean, of course there's games that come out. I'm like, oh man, like Dead Rising 4 just came out. I'm totally stoked to play that, but apparently it's exclusive to Xbox. I don't have an Xbox One, and it's not coming to Steam for another fucking three three months. For some reason, and I hope they put the overtime mode on that, and they don't keep withholding it as fucking DLC. That's so stupid. Yeah, I don't know when I'll get an Xbox. Maybe, I mean, I'd sooner get a PS4 than an Xbox, to be honest. Just because I think overall I, I ha- it has more exclusives that I'm that I'm interested in. Here's an email from Patrick. Have any video games inspired parts of the storyline for Arby and the Chief? Uh, I don't think so. the 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 main motivator for storylines in that show, I think, has just been my experience playing online. It had not really anything to do with the games in particular, but just playing online in general and just how hostile it is across the board and the prejudices people would have or pretend to have to outrage people. This kind of outrage culture that came from online gaming. Well, that didn't come from online gaming, but just it definitely bled into that when when online gaming became a thing. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's any specific video game, but just like online gaming in general and real life stories that I would hear about online gaming. Kids who would like murder people over losing a game or like murder their parents like i'm not even kidding i mean that shit happens sometimes like a a parent steals the kid's xbox and then the kid goes on a rampage and stabs the parent one day you can't take my xbox gets so fucking possessive over it right so that uh, so that fascinated me like you know uh, themes of addiction in online gaming anonymity of course people hide behind this layer and temporarily become somebody they're not and they feel like they have a license to say and do whatever they want and it's like uh 
it's a way of channeling the everyday rage that they feel that they can't express just in person on the st out on the street because they don't want to upset anybody face to face because they might get fucking punched in the face you know but if you do it online nobody knows who you are or where you are so you can say whatever the fuck you want and that always fascinated me you know uh thanks for the email patrick i don't know if you're still in the stream this one's from christian would you be willing to review a script for me after I finish writing it? It's a very stark, dark, and clever idea, but I'm having trouble formatting it on paper. Thanks, you cucky slut. <laughs> Look, I hope you got some uh, advice from what I was talking about beforehand, but I'm not, I'm not, I've got enough shit on my plate. I just got this Crazy Eights thing out of the way, and now I can focus on Arby again. But, like, I don't, I don't want to take any, um, you know revision jobs or anything like that. I mean, I even tried doing that for money on, on Upwork, and I just couldn't deal with it. Your sh- this one is from Alvaro. Subject line, you are gay. Your show is good, and you're cool or whatever. That doesn't cover up the fact that you're a beta cuck, fuck you fag. In all seriousness, thanks for the years of laughs. I still remember when you were doing Dead Rising dubs, and I look forward to seeing your content in the years to come. Yeah, I gotta do another one of those. That would be fun. If I can get the same Mega Man costume in one of the other Dead Rising games, then maybe I'll do it like Dead Rising 2 with like Mega. But then I'd have to actually beat the game and get the costume and shit. Unless you know, if I get if it's on PC, maybe I can get like a hundred percent save file or something. 